Hello, seniors. I'm glad that you are able to view this instructional video in that probes you are interested to learn research. May this video provide you with memorable learning as you go through practical research one. Happy learning! Our lesson today is Selecting and Synthesizing Information from Relevant Literature. Your previous lessons focus on how you would create the heart of your study. Thus, you carefully craft your problem in its background. This time, you will form a firm foundation like a skeleton that will support your study to stand and be successful. The skeleton that is made up of bones would be represented by theories, framework, and studies which can all be gathered through reviewing relevant literature. Therefore, in this part of the lesson, you will continue your research journey by building the foundation of your study. This will begin by knowing how you will select information from available sources and how you will synthesize them in order to serve as a support in substantiating your own study. This would be the review of related literature and studies. At the end of this module, you should be able to cite related literature using standard style, select relevant literature, and synthesize information from relevant literature. Chapter 2 is intended for your review of related literature and studies. All ideas should be related to your study so that this will allow your readers to picture out and understand the depth of the study you will investigate. If your study, let's say, is concerned with the study habits of the students, you will definitely select relevant literature and studies that will support your own work. Hence, in this lesson, you will know how to conduct a literature review as a systematic process starting from selecting potential sources, then applying various strategies in getting important ideas, and ending with the synthesis of all the relevant ideas gathered, which will be presented in your own research work. Other previous researches related to the study currently conducted by a researcher should be put into consideration. When they are summarized comprehensively, this makes the process of literature review. As cited from Bloomsburg University of Pennsylvania in 2020, literature review requires for a survey of scholarly articles, books, and other sources, which will later be enumerated, summarized, and evaluated in order to form a concrete basis and support for the current study. When it is done, the selected literature may appear on various sections of the study, such as in the introduction, related literature section, and the discussion of results. The following are the purposes of literature review according to University of South Carolina Library in 2020. Number one, it provides the researcher a clear understanding of the study to be investigated. Through literature review, the researcher can boost his or her confidence by clearly understanding the phenomenon and be able to clarify essential variables of the study. Second purpose is it justifies the need for conducting the study. Review of literature allows the researcher to identify the existing gaps in knowledge. Thus, further investigation to be conducted by the researcher will be justified. 3. It serves as the basis for establishing concepts presented in the study. Reviewing literature relevant to the current study of the researcher enables him or her to substantiate his or her work. Concepts presented from the study which are supported by literature can make the work of the researcher more credible. Once the researcher has a clear problem as well as a rationale for conducting a study, he or she may now begin selecting literature such as theories, conceptual framework, and related studies 
that will serve as the foundation of the work. In selecting the literature for a study, the following questions should be considered. Can this literature help me clearly present the delimitation of my study? Can this literature give me insights to present properly essential variables of my study? Is this literature up to date? Does this literature provide perceptive and accurate results and conclusions? Thus, this literature presents contrasting ideas which can be used in identifying research gaps. When the researcher is about to engage himself or herself in doing literature review, he or she must do it in a systematic procedure so as to arrive with a comprehensive output which can be later be used in substantiating the work. Boza in 2015 of University of California presents six steps in conducting a literature review. These steps are as follows. First, decide on the area of research. The first step always begins with a clear problem in mind of the researcher. He or she must clearly know the topic as well as the rationale of the study to be conducted. This will allow the researcher to focus on articles and books that are relevant and can help him or her substantiate the work. Second, search for the literature. In searching for the literature which can be used for a study, the researcher may utilize printed materials and references which can normally be found in the libraries. On the other hand, online sources which also offer scholarly articles and books must likewise be considered for this can make the researcher save more time. Number 3. Find relevant excerpts in books and articles. Reading the abstract of a scholarly work will help the researcher determine whether it is relevant or not to the study under investigation. Meanwhile, other sections of a scholarly source, as in articles and books, can also be skimmed in order to get the excerpts of important data which can be used as basis of the study. Definitions of terms, prevalent claims, findings, and conclusions are some of those which the researcher should observe and read carefully. Further, Employing different levels and types of reading can help the researcher to scrutinize efficiently the data and information presented from a reference. Wilson, in 1990, identified four types of reading. These are as follows. Elementary reading. This type of reading pertains to word recognition type of reading wherein sentences are literally comprehended. Systematic reading. This type of reading employs a scheming strategy wherein the researcher reader may focus on the highlighted terms in the sample source manuscript. Similarly, he or she may also look into the title of the sample and will try to see if similar variables of the current study are presented. If yes, he or she may consider the sample as relevant to his or her own work. Analytic reading. This type of reading requires the researcher reader to break the whole scholarly work into parts for better understanding. In addition, it may also observe here that the researcher reader establishes connection with the author by asking the five W's and one H questions through annotation. Use of a dictionary for concept clarification is also often considered in this type of reading. The notes made from the analysis are then synthesized and will serve as an output. Fifth, comparative reading, the fourth type of reading. This type of reading considers two or more scholarly works which will be analyzed for comparing contrasting purposes. Here, the various viewpoints of the authors regarding the particular concepts and principles will be carefully observed. The generalized summary of the analysis from this type of reading then serves as an output. Number four is to code the literature. 
categorizing the themes of the concepts found in different literature must be done for better understanding and evaluation. Themes can be categorized from the similarities to the differences found among those relevant works. Meanwhile, tools for reading and reviewing should also be considered by the researcher in order to save more time since this allow him or her to easily revisit the concepts that may be a help in the process of literature review. Two of the commonly used tools for reading and review purposes are as follows. Highlighting. This tool uses marks and symbols that will help the researcher to easily revisit the important ideas found in a scholarly work. This can also aid the researcher to easily distinguish the similarities and differences found in various sources. Annotation. This tool uses words, phrases, and sentences which serve as written remarks of the researcher reflecting his or her understanding and questions regarding this scholarly work. Fifth, create conceptual schema. After coding the concepts perceived to be important by the researcher in the conduct of the study, he or she may then organize them in order to see in a wider perspective the relevance, including their similarities and differences to the current work. The researcher may utilize a literature review synthesis matrix to better see how the gathered data from literature review will be presented in the study. As cited from Ashford University in 2020, synthesis matrix refers to a table used for organizing important ideas found in the literature. This matrix further allows the researcher to see overlapping ideas among the others. Here below is an example of a synthesis matrix. The source, problem or purpose, design, sample, methods, instrument, and findings. Here is an example of literature review presented through synthesis matrix. For the problem or purpose to study the influence of emojis in communication language for the design, quantitative or quantitative, for the sample, 200 students, for method, survey, instrument is questionnaire. Findings, number one, it revealed that the emoji with tears of joy is the most used emoji among the respondents with a percentage of 43.5%. It is also observed that very less number of respondents use the sad smiley. The second purpose is to provide an overview of the functions of emojis in everyday written communication. Design is quantitative. Sample is 82 people. Methods survey. Instrument questionnaire. For the findings, Number one, it revealed that the most frequent emojis on Twitter since December 2019 from the frequency distribution of emoji per country are the face with tears of joy, accounted for 6.7%, smiling face with heart-shaped eyes with 3.72%, and face throwing a kiss with 2.1%. The sixth step is to begin writing literature review. With a complete vision of necessary data that came from reading and reviewing literature, the researcher may now begin the draft of the manuscript for review of the related literature section. He or she must not forget to cite the author of any data that will be used for the study. The use of transitional words will also be helpful in order to arrange ideas accordingly. For example, the use of similarly to present that ideas have in common. Example of literature review presented in a research manuscript entitled Emojiology, a study of functions of emojis in the virtual community by Tabernero in 2020. The frequently used type of emoji in computer-mediated communication, the widespread use of emojis as a form of supplement in messages 
across computer-mediated communication has been highly observed. These icons are almost always present in different social media platforms since easy access to them has been made possible by smartphone devices. Hence, social media users can easily use them during their online communication. With this, many scholars have become interested of determining what specific type of emoji dominates the virtual world. Based on the study of Suresh, entitled The Influence of Emojis and Communication Using Social Media, a quantitative study among college students of Missouri, it revealed that the tears of joy type of emoji is a frequently utilized icon among the respondents with a percentage of 43.5%. This is followed by emoji thumbs up sign which is used by 12% of the respondents. It is also observed that very a smaller number of respondents use the sad smiley. Similarly, in terms of a specific social media platform, Twitter, it was also found that the tears of joy type of emoji is the frequently utilized one. This is in accordance with the study of Subenik and Visor in 2016 entitled A Global Analysis of Emoji Usage. Here they revealed that the face with tears of joy emoji is the most used emoji on Twitter since December 2015. And based on the frequency distribution of emoji used from each country, 6.7% was accounted to face with tears of joy. 3.72% to smiling face with heart-shaped eyes, 2.1% to smiling face with smiling eyes, and another 2.1% to face throwing a kiss. Moving on, let's have the plagiarism and paraphrasing. Responsible writing is necessary for writing academic text. As a novice researcher, you need to take note that you ought to be responsible for the things that you write in your research. One of the elements in writing responsibly is through proper citation, both in text and reference citation. Aside from it, it is proper to list your sources on the information that you are bringing out. Furthermore, you need to give proper credit to the author by acknowledging his or her ideas. Nonetheless, you are avoiding plagiarism that is usually done when you quote words or ideas created or first used by others. By doing it, your readers can track down the sources that you utilize by citing them properly through footnotes, bibliography, or reference list. To properly cite your sources, you need to learn first the types of plagiarism. Plagiarism is often committed when you use words and ideas without making credit to the person who formulated it, making those words and ideas your own, according to Suleiman in 2018. These are the types of plagiarism. Number one, direct plagiarism. This type of plagiarism is committed when you copy word for word a section of others' words without quotation marks according to Lloyd in 2002. Example, the stage of dialogue was the action of conversation. On this manner, the incident was immediately addressed and effects were identified from the research titled The Die is Cast, Experiences of Novice Teachers in Handling Verbal Bullying Incidents in a Middle School, written by Dexter V. Fernandez Maed and Arnold T. Sikat, Ph.D. This is the proper way of citing a direct quotation. The stage of dialogue was the action of conversation. In this manner, the incident was immediately addressed and effects were identified. Number two is self-plagiarism. This plagiarism is often committed when you mix your previous works to come up with new article without proper citation and permission to the teacher you previously submitted the work. According to Helgeson and Erickson 2014, plagiarism.org 2011. Example, you submitted a research for practical research one. 
the occurrence of verbal bullying was a typical scenario in middle school. This kind of abuse was commonly committed by students towards their peers. With the literature about this matter, little less has been conducted about the manner novice teachers handle verbal bullying incidents. A year later, you submitted it again in practical research too. The occurrence of verbal bullying was a typical scenario in middle school. This kind of abuse was commonly committed by students towards their peers with the literature about this matter. Little less has been conducted about the manner novice teachers handle verbal bullying incidents. As you can see, it is copied word for word. Number three is mosaic plagiarism. It is committed when you take phrases from a source without using quotation marks or citation. Thus, you just find synonyms to the author's words while keeping the same thought as it is in the original, according to Roca 2017. Here is an example of a mosaic plagiarism. As you can see, these highlighted words are replaced with their synonyms, like occurrence to event, typical common, middle to secondary, peers, is replaced with classmates, novice to new, and middle to secondary. The fourth type is the accidental plagiarism. This is committed when unintentionally neglected to cite a source or quoted by using similar words or sentence structure. This can be avoided through responsible writing and running your work in an initial plagiarism test available in Internet. According to Learning Services Writing Center 2018. Paraphrasing is the answer for us not to fall to any type of plagiarism according to Wallwork 2011. However, this needs your attention to learn the competencies in achieving proper paraphrasing, careful reading, in depth. Uh, comprehension and good writing are the skills you need to improve for you to come up with good paraphrase sentences. There is no perfect way of paraphrasing a sentence or paragraph. It is because it will depend on the manner you understand what you have read. So what you need is a better understanding. Here is the suggested way for you to come up with good paraphrasing. Five ways to paraphrase. First, take time to read. Careful reading of the text enables you to grasp the meaning of the sentence you are going to paraphrase. It is recommended to read it three times or even more. This is to give you enough time to comprehend the meaning of what you are reading, according to University of New England to when it wearing. Second, take note of the key points. This is done through highlighting or listing the points or ideas presented in the text that you are reading. Through this, you will see the things that the author wanted to impart in his or her write-ups. However, for you as a reader, those will also be the basis on how you will explain the ideas that were presented. Number 3. Rewrite what you have read but use your own words. Rewriting what you have read does not mean you will just copy it. Nevertheless, you are going to write what you have read based from what you have understood from it. However, you need to be very careful not to eliminate the ideas of what you have paraphrased. Number 4. Compare what you have written with the original text. Through this, you may be able to see the similarities and difference between the original text and what you have paraphrased. You need to remember that the paraphrased sentence or paragraph has a structural difference from the original, even the choice of words. However, the thought presented in the original text must not be different from the paraphrased text. Number 5. Make Citation there are so many citation styles available to you, 
but always refer back to what is prescribed to you by the organization or institution you are writing. If they prescribe you to use a particular citation style, then you need to follow that standard. For example, many colleges and universities in the Philippines use American Psychological Association or APA 6 edition citation style. On the other hand, in the Department of Education or DepEd, they use DepEd Manual of Style and Chicago Manual of Style. Let us paraphrase this. The occurrence of verbal bullying was a typical scenario in the middle school. This kind of abuse was commonly committed by students towards their peers. Paraphrase, verbal bullying is common in high school. Students usually commit this towards their classmates. Another example, the interview was directed to the five novice teachers who were identified through criterion sampling. Paraphrase, five new teachers are chosen to be participants through criterion sampling. That's the end of our lesson today. It's been my pleasure teaching you one of the amazing topics of Practical Research 1, and I really hope you learned something from this video lesson. Thank you, and may God bless us all. Let's meet again in our next video.